I get it. The plans weren't for you, they were for me. Have a great time, Harvey. You know, just because she gave you a key doesn't mean you're staying here. Why would I stay here? I've got my old apartment that you're pretending to rent for me. Rick Sorkin? <laughs> You've gone soft. I was using it as a tax shelter. And what's the name of that tax shelter? I'm a softie? Maybe I've always been a softie. Oh, what happened to uh, caring makes you weak? I think you're confusing caring with moving to Seattle. Speaking of Seattle, don't you have some old ladies looking to sue the condo association or whatever big case you got going these yes, days? Yes, I do, but those ladies are gonna have to wait because I always have time for an old friend. <sighs> it's good to see you, Harvey. Great to see you, Mike. Is that Gianno's? It is. You like yellow tomatoes? I tell Donna to kiss you, she does, and then as a result, you ask another woman to move in with you. It was a complicated situation. Must have been, because then Donna starts dating a client, breaks privilege for him, and then you two end up together. Didn't we already discuss this on the phone like a month ago? Yeah, but if it had been on FaceTime, I'd let it go, but a real friend needs to enjoy the shame in person. Well, while you're doing that, let's have it. Have what? Why you're really here, because I'm not buying you showed up unannounced without a reason. If you really must know, I'm here on business. The business of begging for your old job back? Because it's too late, we've replaced you. Yeah, but did they have a law degree? Shit, I knew there was something I forgot to check. You see, if you had my memory, you wouldn't forget things like that. No, I just forget to lock my briefcase full of weed. The lock was broken. Your brain's broken. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Who's the asshole you're going up against? Actually, I think you know him pretty well. His name is Harvey Sphincter. He plays it real tight. You gotta be kidding me. A five hour flight and all you came up with was Sphincter? I stand by Sphincter. But you want something better? How about this? I represent Jeremy Wall and he wants out of his contract with Brick Street. Wait a second, out? Mm -hmm. Jeremy's deal stipulates they do no harm to his image and exploiting overseas workers is textbook harm. Exploiting its workers? Where's he getting that idea? He went on a goodwill trip. He saw the factory himself. Well, if you want me to sell them on this, He's gonna have to give them their money back. Oh, he's not giving back a dime. He's not walking for free. I figured you might say that, so I brought a little incentive. Breach of contract. I see what this is. You don't want me to convince Brick Street. You want to take me on. I'll take you on, kick your ass. I mean, what's the difference? Well, in that case, why don't you and Jeremy pop by tomorrow? And by pop by, I mean sit for a deposition. Are you sure? You're not worried about losing to a lawyer in his prime? I hate to break it to you, Mike, but I was in my prime before you were born, and I'll be in it long after you're dead. You know that doesn't make sense, right? It will, when you're in your prime. Then I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and Harvey, to um, put this in a way that you might understand, if this ends up going to a jury like they do in Survivor, I'll be the last man standing. I knew I'd watch Survivor. What exactly is complicated about it? Hey, Jeremy's here. Ready to go do this deposition? Jeremy? Let me get this straight. Not only did you take my client without telling me, you scheduled a deposition with the other side? Wait, her client? Mike, meet Samantha Wheeler. I gave her Brick Street about a month ago. I might have forgotten to mention that to you last night. Samantha, meet Mike Ross. Mm. Protégé. Okay, why did she just say it like that? If I had to take a guess, it's because she thought you'd be taller. I'm the same height as you. The lies we tell ourselves. It's because I'm less concerned with meeting you than kicking your ass, since I'm the one you're gonna be going up against, not him. Hang on, I didn't agree to that. Harvey, if I may? Uh, Samantha, I get it. I've been where you are right now a hundred times. It's so frustrating, but I think we all know Harvey's gonna take this client back, whether you like it or not, so we might as well just let him do it. <laughs> That's about as naive as hoping we'll let Jeremy Wall out of his contract. No, this isn't really about hope. It's about Brick Street doing right by its workers. And if you think that sob story is gonna work here, you're wrong. Sob stories are a specialty. I prefer to call it appealing to a jury's humanity. Well, I call it bringing a violin to a gunfight. Well, we'll see what you call it when I'm done. Anyway, I'll give you two a minute to discuss who's gonna take the loss. Mr. Wall, you claim to have seen objectionable factory conditions. I'm not claiming anything, I, I saw them. Those people are miserable. And misery isn't a violation of international law. Are they violating international law? I don't know. No, you don't, because you're a basketball player. You're not a lawyer. That doesn't mean I can't tell when something's not right. And when exactly did you start thinking something wasn't right? When I visited that factory six months ago. And yet you're only bringing this up now? Why? Because, like you said, I, I'm a basketball player. I, I didn't know what to do or, or who to go to. No, you were afraid you wouldn't be paid your full contract. Don't talk to my client like that. And you can't speak to his motivations. I don't care about his motivations. 
What I want to know is why he lied about being contacted by an activist named Charles Hu. I didn't lie about anything. You said you didn't care about the conditions until six months ago. He wrote you 18 months ago. Sounds like a lie to me. That letter got me a little concerned, but I didn't take it seriously until I saw the conditions myself. And what you need to take seriously is that you had one year to blow the whistle and you are six months too late. Bullshit, that letter was unsolicited. It, it didn't trigger his awareness. He just said it did. He used the word concern. This is a technicality. No, Mike, it's the terms of his contract. 